Good evening. This is your Weekend Knots TV News. I'm Richard Spur. The Chancellor of the Exchequer has said that those in charge of Nottingham's tram extension are incompetent. George Osborne came to Beeston yesterday to talk to business owners in Chilwell Road. The area has been affected since March last year. It was only supposed to be closed for 12 months, but work is still taking place after delays. He called for more to be done to speed up the work after hearing from some hard-hit traders. Police have said that the fire which destroyed an unfinished £20 million building at the University of Nottingham was not arson. The laboratory at the university was burnt down last month. Knott's TV showed you these pictures as the flames took hold. 60 firefighters tackled the blaze at the carbon neutral building on the Jubilee campus, which was due to open next year. The fire service said it couldn't reveal the exact cause until a health and safety investigation was over. Video game enthusiasts have descended on Nottingham for the opening day of Game City. The event, now in its ninth year, gives gamers the opportunity to enjoy the world of video games as part of a free week-long event. Game City visitors of all ages are able to relive their favourite childhood games and test out some of the new ones which the festival has on offer. Game City director Ian Simon says this year's festival has lots to recommend itself. Surprises, really. So we hope we're going to see uh, games that you won't have seen before, games that have been made by different kinds of people, the sort of stuff that you might see in the shops. Um, and if you're not a gamer, most importantly, if you're not a gamer or you don't think you're a gamer, we'd really like you to come down because um, there's lots of stuff to discover. If you're not into this stuff, I think you'll see some things that uh, yeah, surprise you about what you thought games were. It looks fun, doesn't it? People in Nottingham have been transported back in time to the 12th century. The grounds of the castle have been transformed into a medieval village, complete with Robin Hood and his merry men. It's all part of the annual Robin Hood pageant, which this year takes place on International Robin Hood Day. Visitors have been reliving history with five jousting tournaments, stories from minstrels and historical entertainers, all in a push to help celebrate our heroic outlaw. Now, some of the stories which have been hitting the headlines in Knots this week. You'll hear about a breakthrough in cancer treatment as a new device arrives at the John Van Geest Cancer Centre at Nottingham Trent University. Also, how Nottingham's Paralympic hero Tim Reddish is training up a new recruit after his best friend and guide dog V retires. But first, if you're a driver, the chances are you'll have been caught in traffic on the A453. It's now on the list of the 10 most congested areas of roadworks in the UK. And with months of disruption ahead, residents say they've had enough, as Will Klempner reports. To drivers who regularly use the A453, this is a familiar view. Roadworks have been causing congestion between Clifton and Junction 24 of the M1 for more than a year and a half. The problem is so bad, the road has now been named in a survey by a traffic information firm as the 10th worst route in the UK for congestion caused by roadworks. This is the worst road I've come across. <laughs> um, and I travel around Coventry, the West Midlands, Birmingham, and it's just been an absolute nightmare the last few months. Um, for like a 9am lecture, I leave at least two hours. Um, to try and get to uni on time. You know, I live in Clifton, work in Clifton, and it's long overdue. We actually do need this improvement. The road is being widened as part of a £160 million scheme. £20 million of that has come from Nottinghamshire County Council, who hope it'll boost Nottingham's economy by over £500 million. But the improvements have caused a lot of disruption, and some people are now saying they fear they won't even make any difference. Margaret has lived in Clifton for 26 years. The works to live with over the past year have been an absolute nightmare. It could take normally 10, 15 minutes on the number three bus, for an example, and it now takes up to 50 if the bus turns up at all. I don't think it's going to change anything. OK, it's going to make a better road, but you're still going to get the congestion. They're not going to make any difference because when you get down to the Clifton Bridge, there's still going to be a bottleneck down there. The work started in January 2013, and the Highways Agency insists that by the time they're finished, the road will be much improved. It's very likely that the survey is correct. The road is extremely congested at the moment, which is why we're building the scheme. And the final and the solution which we're coming up with will resolve this issue and hopefully in the future people will be able to drive very swiftly and safely from the M1 into southern Nottingham. Its capacity will be double that of the existing road and it will be much 
neater and fast and safer for people to drive through um, from one end of the scheme to the other than it is at the moment. The improvements here are due to be finished by spring next year, but in the meantime it doesn't seem as though the traffic on the A453 is going anywhere. Will Klempner, Notts TV News. At first glance, it could be mistaken for an office printer, but this new arrival at the John Van Gies Centre in Clifton is a mass spectrometer, costing almost half a million. The new piece of equipment is used to weigh molecules, which will help to identify proteins linked to cancer. So the mass spectrometer works by, we take, say, a blood sample, and that blood sample contains tens of thousands, potentially hundreds of thousands of different types of protein. And we inject them into a machine that separates them. We then ionise the sample, which gives it a charge, which allows us to guide it with an magnet electromagnetic field. And we send them through the, through the instrument to the other end to a detector. And what we're able to do is every time the instrument detects a peak that indicates part of a protein, it will smash it up, it will fragment it. And we simply then see that on the screen as a series of peaks you know, each peak is a different um, iron with a different molecular weight. And it means that we can run a lot of samples very quickly and very easily try and decide which, can which proteins have gone up in cancer patients, which proteins have gone down. So now you have an idea of how it works, how can this instrument be influential in the early diagnosis of cancer, in particular breast and prostate? identify markers of cancer um, or perhaps being able to detect disease early in people. So we need ways of identifying these proteins and this instrument allows us to identify them by weighing them very very accurately. Looking for these tiny differences that we could use as, as, as a guide to whether this patient is going to have an aggressive form of the disease, whether this patient will have a form of the disease that they could live with for 40 years. If you're 70 years old and you've got a prostate cancer that's going to be slow growing 40 years, you probably don't want invasive surgery with nasty side effects. Mass spectrometers have been used for decades, but this new and improved version could be crucial in the future development of a cancer vaccine. And the other aspect is, can we find something that we can target for a vaccine? Does this cancer make a protein that we can target? Um, and these vaccines, they're not like the, the vaccines you get as a child to prevent disease. You can give them to treat disease. We call it immunotherapy. And that's one of the main focuses of the John Van Gies Cancer Research Centre is, is to find very simple, um, quick injection. Can you train your own body to fight the cancer off? This is just the beginning. A few more mass spectrometers like this one are due to arrive at other centres across the UK. Experts at the John Van Gie Centre hope it will prove a breakthrough weapon in the fight against cancer. Sharon Walia, Notts TV News. Meet V. After nearly a decade by the side of Paralympic hero and Freeman of Nottingham, Tim Reddish, she's now in the first weeks of her hard-earned retirement. And 27-month-old Labrador retriever Cross Pip is her replacement. Now don't worry, V is staying in the Reddish family as a pet. But as Tim and Pip go out for some training, how does V feel about being left behind? She's been pretty good actually for most of the time, but every now and again she'll just uh, uh, fancy coming to work again, I think. Uh, the odd morning she's tried to put her head in the harness before Pip has, but other than that, she's been pretty laid back because she's 11 and a half now and she's been working hard for oh, nine years and, and my life has been a little hectic over those years. Training a new guide dog isn't easy. In fact, everyday objects can quickly become obstacles. Just there, Tim. So he's just stood indicating that there's something in the way, yep. um, so we're just going to get nice and straight and parallel to your dog with your positioning. Not to mention the busy ring road that Tim lives near. Crossings have to be navigated and trainer Alex has to ensure Pip is ready to keep Tim safe. We've been introducing him initially to routes that the dog knows to get Tim used to how the dog feels because um, he feels very differently to his old dog V who's now retired. Um, so he's just got to get used to the movement and the feel of the dog when he's walking along. And they've got to get a bond as well. Really important that they get a really strong bond between the two of them um, so that they, um, the dog wants to work for Tim and wants to be with Tim. It's early days, but how's Pip doing? As a unit and as, as being together, I think we're doing exceptionally well. And uh, today he's done a great job. We've, 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 we're finding the boxes that's important so I can press the button that indicates when it's safe for me to cross. The training has gone well and it's time to head home. It's important that Pip knows he's done a good job, so after a little play, he can head inside for rest. 
New partnerships don't always work out, so how's it looking for Tim and Pip? My philosophy is that me and my dog should be able to get anywhere safely. Remember these dogs love to work. Pip loves to work, so he will want to work. So if we can be a great unit working together for the next nine years like V did, it will be an unbelievable experience for both of us. So it's good news. It looks like Tim and Pip have a bright future, while V enjoys her well-earned rest. Christian Hugill, not TV News. Bless him. Sport and in football, Nottingham Forest host Blackburn today as Stuart Pearce's men look for their first win in seven games. Mansfield Town are also looking for better results as they travel to York, having not won in five matches. County, on the other hand, aim to continue their climb up the league as they play away to struggle as Scunthorpe United. And the Panthers are also in action, playing host to the defending elite league champions. The Belfast Giants will have all of those results in tomorrow's show. Notts TV weather. Sponsored by WePrintLanyards.com. For any event, whatever the weather. It's been a fairly windy and cool day with highs of just 13. And tonight, mostly cloudy and breezy for you with the odd spot of light rain spreading in from the west towards dawn, lows of 8. Tomorrow's going to be another breezy one and mainly cloudy with a risk of patchy rain in the west later. Highs of 14 but dropping down to 10 in the early hours. And Monday's looking milder and cloudy with the outside chance of a few showers later in the day. Highs of 17 and lows of 12. Knott's TV weather, sponsored by WePrintLanyards.com. For any event, whatever the weather. That's all your news for now from the weekend team and from me. Bye-bye.